Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. player designs across footwear accessories and retail design with 10 years of experience working alongside a fortune 500 company before she was inspired by functional design please welcome the owner and chief creative designer at mr ok's essential precious hannah hello everyone and welcome to the shades of entrepreneurship this is your host mr gabriel flores today i'm here with precious precious how are we doing I'm good. How you doing? I'm I'm excited because uh, your candles are phenomenal. I was we were talking about this before we jumped on the air. I got some upstairs. I've been all over these things. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and before we start talking about the candle game, go ahead and give the world who, who go and introduce yourself. Who is Precious? <laughs> hey y'all! I am Precious. Um, I am the owner and founder of Mister OK's Essentials. Um, Portland's favorite candle maker, vibe curator. Uh, yeah, that's me. That's facts. me. Facts, that's like me. just straight facts. That's me. That's 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 precious. I mean, in fact, if you want, I believe, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you actually have candle making workshops. I do, I do. You can actually come in the shop. The pot is always hot. You come in anytime, make a candle. Um, yeah, create your own vibe. I, I strongly believe in that because it's like. I create the vibes that I want to share with people, but I think it's very important for people to come in and create whatever vibe that they want in their own houses, you know? Yeah, no, I feel it. Now let's talk, let's talk a little bit about Mr. OK Essentials. What is it? So Mr. OK's Essentials is a modern home care brand, um, specializing in not only candles, but body butters, soaps, room sprays. Uh, We, we just want to make you feel at home. You know, we want to, we want, we want, we want to bring luxury to your spot at a reasonable price. Price point is key. Yeah. You know, I, I love, I love what you said. Modern home care brand. Yeah. That's what we are. You know, and it, it. it fits, it fits the brand very well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, you, you mentioned though, pricing is key. Why, why, is. Is, why is that so important? So I'll say this, um, when I first started um, Mr. OK's Essentials, um, I started Mr. OK's Essentials six months after I had Onyx. So the company is named after my son. His name's Onyx King, and we call him Mr. OK. And a lot of people don't talk about this, especially like um, women with postpartum. Having a child, before you have a kid, you can go out, you buy whatever you want to. There's no time restraints, kind of. Um, it's like all about you when it comes to like self self care. I'm gonna go get an iced coffee. I go get an iced coffee. I'm not thinking about like what what my kid needs because I don't have any. Um, after I had Onyx, there were things that I had to cut out, things that I didn't know that I needed to cut out, or not even know. It's just that it was so used to me having them that it felt like not having them felt some type of way because of the price point. So I felt like a part of me was leaving, and I was embarking on this new chapter and I didn't know how to embark on this new chapter because I had never been here before so having a reasonable price point is very key to me because I want to make sure that the product is accessible to people period um no matter what type of income you have coming I want to make sure that you are able to be able to buy a room spray or some soap or even a candle um a body butter and not feel like oh man I could have used that money towards x y and z yeah, you mentioned that, you know, this this brand is actually named after your son, Onyx. And you kind of talked about the starting of it. Give yeah. us the give us the full photo. Give us a give us the picture. How why did you start it? How did you start this brand? So basically the brand was started. I was I was very worried about what kind of shoes he was gonna wear, um, what kind of clothes and putting his fingers inside of sockets, and not necessarily what we were burning in our house, which is a biopetroleum product. Um 
I mean, you you necessarily you don't know because you just go to the store. You want to get a candle, you know, to set the mood. Um, something that goes with the vibe of your house, and you're just thinking it's a candle. Why would it be harmful? But a lot of these candles have like phosphates and petroleum and just crazy amounts of things in them. And I remember sitting there one day after buying a candle from the local store and being like, what is that black stuff coming off the candle? Like, <laughs> what is that? And I don't know what happens when you become a parent, but something chemically in your brain just switches on and it's like, wait, what's in this? What, like you're looking at ingredients, you're looking, you're just paying yep. attention <laughs> to so much stuff that you didn't really care about before. Um, but yeah, I, I had that question. I started looking up research and realizing that a lot of the candles that we were burning were paraffin, which is a biopetroleum product. Um, and that switching to soy would actually be better. Um, it would eliminate a lot of toxins that the paraffin candle was giving off. Also, our candles are, they have cedar wooden wicks. And the reason why we use that is because not only does it help with the longevity of the candle, our candles burning 50 to 60 hours, a nine ounce. Uh, it also creates a vibe. You know, you got a little crackle in the background. Um, it helps purify your air in a sense. And it doesn't le- it doesn't leave soot. Um, a lot of candles have aluminum in the inside of the uh, cotton wick, which can introduce your body to Alzheimer's and dementia. So we wanted to make sure that if we're giving a clean product, we wanted to make it as clean as we could. And that's that's how it started. After the candles, um, we we went into soaps, mainly because Onyx was having some eczema. Uh, being out here in Oregon, we wanted to make sure that we addressed that quickly. Uh, and then that kind of led into the body butters, which was also cool. And then now recently we started doing room sprays mainly because a lot of our consumers were like, I can't burn, I love your candles, but I can't burn a candle in my house or my apartment because I'm a college student or I simply don't trust myself burning a candle because what if I fall asleep? Um, we've had people just say, I just want something super quick. So why not just create something by, you know, consumer demand where they can just go in spray it real quick and you got the vibe. Man, I love that. And and I got to tell you folks that the scents are phenomenal, but also having the wherewithal, you you kind of mentioned it, right? Looking at consumer, what, what does a consumer demand want and, and (laughs) vertically integrate into that space. Right. But also, uh, you know, I've had certain folks, Crete was a great example, a skin product, you know, again, with an entrepreneur who focused on, he needed this skin product. So he focused on it. Right. Uh, and, and for folks that are listening, uh, they probably, a lot of folks shop at target, uh, just today, target had a huge candle recall, uh, several thousand candles because the glass on the threefold, I think they're or three hold or I can threshold. I think they're called maybe, yep, yep. um, their, their candle brand, right. The, the glass to your point, precious, the, the material that they're using, the glass had the unfortunate, they had the possibilities of breaking and shattering. Right. Uh, and that's crazy. That's yeah. Wild. I mean, they, they always tell you, you know, make sure you burn your candle for four hours or less, but sometimes you just be in a mood or just vibing that you forget that four hours has passed. And depending on what type of glass it is, the glass can expand. And yeah, so you don't, you don't want that issue nor problem in your house. Yeah. Yeah. No, not at all. And it's kind of funny. You mentioned you, you see the black, you know, start to come up from the candles and you start thinking it's like having a small little campfire in your house. Yeah. (laughs) And we don't think about that. Yeah. It's just a candle. Now, is this your first business? This is, in fact, my first business. Actually, no. Yo, well, yeah, you know what? This is my first real business. I'll say that. <laughs> this is my first LLC real business. <laughs> keep, them, um, keep them side hustles. <laughs> yeah, I had a, uh, you know, I have a couple of side hustles, but this is my official first business. I started off um, with wallets and wallets were super cool. I was doing them by hand, cutting everything like, stippling hand sewing and i was like this is taking too long i don't this is not this is not it they were beautiful wallets but literally i think maybe a year after i dabbled with that that's when mr okay's essentials came 
why the pivot? Was it just because the Onyx was born? Was that kind of the primary pivot? Yeah, I mean, to be completely honest with you, I would, I, as myself, would have never thought that I would be pouring candles or creating any type of home brand. Um, I always knew I wanted to do something in home, but never candles. My whole thing was, I thought I was going to be designing like sinks and trash cans because I love stuff like that. Um, home appliances, but not necessarily something where a consumer is going and experiencing something that they could change out whenever they wanted to. Where where does this passion for design come from? <laughs> uh, I've been in art for a very, well, design specifically for a very, very long time. Um, my art career started in middle school, sixth grade. That kind of led into me going to one of um, Miami's. I'm from Miami, by the way. Uh, the, Miami, the Florida. Not, yeah, not Ohio, Miami. No, no, Miami, <laughs> Miami Florida, y'all. Okay. <laughs> um, <Get that right. laughs> you never know. People be like Ohio. I'm like, how do you? Get that? They even know it's what? Miami and Ohio. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, my Miami, Florida. Um, ended up going to one of the top. Um, product design schools, high schools in Miami, which is design and architecture senior high, which introduced me to product design. So I started my product design career in 10th grade. Uh, that led me to be featured in Art Basel 20, sorry, 2008, which was crazy to be 17 and featured in Art Basel. That then led to me going to Detroit to go to one of the top industrial design colleges, uh, College for Creative Studies which then led me to um, starting my career as a footwear designer at Nike. And I was at Nike for nine and a half years. Wow. That's just the most unique, awesome, coolest upbringing ever. Like being able to really focus on like product development at the eight, like sophomore year in high school. Yeah, it was hard. Like, I think there was a lot of give and go with it. And with that, being said, like in high school, we didn't have like a, a basketball team or a football team or none of that. It was like, yo, we got this art thing going on. You coming? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess there's, there's nothing else to do. So yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Um, yeah, it was, it was way different. It was super different being one, um, just predominantly surrounded by individuals who didn't particularly look like me. Because the school, the school was predominantly white. So being in a school, coming from a school that was predominantly black, then shifting to a school that was predominantly white, and then going to a school that was even more predominantly white, it was like, okay, okay, this is, this is different. The art scene is just different. Um, but yeah, it definitely prepared me for a lot of things. Um, the, the design of the store, the design of the packaging, the design of the story, everything is curated. So I appreciate it. Man, and I love that you've really kind of pointed that out is everything has to be curated, right? You want to have a story uh, to draw folks in. You're not creating value. You're essentially exploiting what they believe is valuable, right? Exactly. You're, you're not really creating anything. They already, they already have their values and they believe in what's valuable. You're just trying to find out what that is. And, and as you mentioned earlier, the, the customer demand and kind of focusing on that right now, what, how, during that pivot, you know, you kind of mentioned from wallets now going to candles and you're starting a, you're starting a, a formal business, right? Yeah. What, what were some of the things that you learned during that time that you're like, wow, I didn't know how to do this. Yo, I'm just going to say this off back. Entrepreneurship is not for the week, period. It is not for the week. Um, there are a whole bunch of things that I had to learn. One, labels. Labels are so important. Oh my goodness. I cannot stress to you how important a great label is because you could have the best design ever and you put a paper label on your product and you continuously have people picking it up and touching it. And then all of a sudden you and you don't even have no letters on your product. Because all of the, the letters are gone. Yeah. Um, I had to learn that real quick. <laughs> real quick. I was like, wait, hold on. Why is why you got black ink on your phone? It's 
it's rubbing off. Okay. Yeah. I had to learn that real quick. Margins. Um, also had to learn that real quick because you can be out here making the greatest product, but if your margins don't make sense, you're not making money. Therefore, you just out here giving away whatever you're giving away. Um, also, uh, I think what a lot of people forget is customer service. That is key. Um, eye contact and smile will go a long way. Listening to people, even if they're telling you about their dog and it has nothing to do with anything that you are doing. Customer service goes a long way. People just want to know that you care, especially if they're investing in your product. They just want to know that you are actually hearing them. You are listening to them, not just hearing them, listening to them. And that you care about not only what you're giving them, but about what, whatever, you know, whatever they're talking about, you care, be responsive communication. So yeah, those, those are the three big things and showing up. You have to show up. You cannot have a business and not show up. So, yeah. Those are, those are great points. And I I like your, your business at how it allows the end user to come in and create their own candles as well, because I think that goes back to, um, that inspiration, right? The value, right? Trying to yep. get folks uh, sensing that value. Now, what would you say has been the most difficult aspect of of starting your own business? Uh, time. I do not have enough time. I time is a big thing. I'm pretty good with time management. I would say, I if it's not on the calendar, it's not getting done. That's my thing. If it is not on the calendar, it's not getting done. If I did not write it down, it will not get done. Um, But time, mainly because Onyx is at such a pivotal age, and although I am building this brand for him, I would never want him to feel like I was never there because I was building um, or spending so much time doing this. Because, I mean, he's just, six years old is, like, hard. You're starting school, you're in kindergarten, you're doing this, this, this is happening, you're playing games, so much, you're learning so much stuff. And I just want him to feel like, you know, yeah, mom was there. I, rem- I remember mom being there. So I think that's that's the biggest thing for me is like having enough time and not having mom guilt when it's like I have to do a show. Like, oh, shit, I got to go do this show. What is, does Onyx have anything going on? Okay, I feel good. I feel all right. I can go do it. So, yeah, that's that has been the biggest thing, time. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I think a lot of folks struggle, even myself included, my goal has always been to be able to, you know, we kind of briefly talked about it, you know, the finances of the, the cost, of the candle, not being able to, you know, have some of those things at some time. My goal throughout life is being able to financially tell my kids no and not have to tell my kids no, right? Being able to have the financial uh, ability to say, yeah, we can get that, but there are a few things you got to do first. You, know, you got to <laughs> cut the yard, you got to put away the dishes, you know, you got to do some things, you know what I mean? But but having that ability, and, and to your point too, uh, the time management is so important. Uh, I, I mentioned it on my LinkedIn page not too long ago. It's just like the generational impact you'll have on our families will last 99% longer than the impact you'll have on your career. And, and what I mean by that is, and you know, you have a kid, I have two kids, you know, and our kids, when they have kids, they're going to tell their kids how great their parents were. Exactly. And then hopefully their kids are going to tell their kids how great their grandparents were. And then hopefully we become great grandparents if we're able to live that long. That's, that's a probability of three generational impact. Uh, and when we have a career, uh, like my career in healthcare, um, I could start a whole new division and a whole new hospital and do a lot of amazing things. And then somebody else will come in five, 10 years later and they'll re-image the entire department. And so that impact is gone. Right. Uh, and so, just just being being mindful of that, entrepreneurs, the folks that are listening, is hey, work hard, play hard, spend more time with family, right? That's, <laughs> that's it. Spend 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 as much time as you can with family. Um, yeah, because it's just you. It's 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 a lot of value in having your own company. It's a lot of value in creating your own brand, but the value fades if you don't have anyone to share it with or someone to be happy that you have done or accomplished something that you were trying to accomplish. So yeah, take them, take them along on a ride, you know? Uh, I completely agree. I completely agree. Now let's flip the question. Has there any been easy about entrepreneurship? 
Yeah, you know what? <laughs> what I do love about entrepreneurship, I will say that you lit that, up real quick. <laughs> the network. Oh my goodness, mm. the love, especially in Portland. The love is real out here for small businesses. I had no clue. I had no clue. Um, people show up. They show up. And I'm so grateful for everyone who has shown up for me, not only at the store, but at vendor shows that I've done. People love collabs. Uh, this year has been very pivotal for me because this is my actual first year being immersed completely in the business and um, really having to make hard decisions. And if I have, if, if I'm trying to figure out a decision and I don't necessarily know what to do, I can call one of my other entrepreneur homies and literally walk through it, have very open conversations and know that there is no judgment. And it's like, you know what? You were right. I should look at it from this perspective. Or is there any books I should read? Like the resources are endless. And it's it's such it's such a a breath of fresh air. Because one, you are steering the, your own ship. You know, this is your boat. You're steering it. But yo, if a girl ran out of gas, hey, can you can you light me up real quick? Yeah, I got you. I got you. This is what you need to do. This is how you should do it. I love that. Yeah. Like, I absolutely love that. I love the networking. I love the love. The love is real. Yeah, the, the vibe in Oregon is it's and I think it's that hopefully it's across the whole state because I feel like it's in, certainly in the Portland metro area, the area that we've been focusing on quite a bit recently. But man. Everybody comes out the woodworks willing to help out. It truly, truly, I mean, the amount of people that have been on this show as well have just kind of emphasized that as well. It's just, it's just amazing. Now, how do you build the brand? How how do you build? You know, you mentioned now this year you've been like full force this year. How do you build a candle brand in Portland? You got to be focused. You got to be focused, and you got to want it. Um, a lot of people want to do a lot of things but they don't want to take the steps to do it. And I never really looked at that until I was having a conversation with Ian from Deadstock. And um, I remember when I was getting ready to resign from my, uh, my last career, he was like, what are you doing today? No, we had a conversation before and I was like, yo, I really want to get into this candle thing, Kevin. He was like, okay, well, you gonna have to make some steps. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make the steps. He was like, okay. Two weeks later, I went to deck stock and he was like, so what are you doing today? And I was like, I'm going to resign because I want to go full fledged into it. And he was like looking at me like, yo, whoa, we just had this conversation. Are you about to do it? I'm like, yeah. And he said that to me, like, you know, people, people say a lot of things, but they don't do it. It takes them years or months or there's an excuse to why they can't do it, even though they want to do it. Um, Yeah, I. It's. Yeah, you you gotta you gotta be ready. I would also say like you just need a plan. I kind of went into it without a plan. Plan. I knew I had something, so that's why I say you gotta be focused. I knew I had something with candles. I knew that nobody on the Pacific Northwest was doing what I was doing. I knew that no one had the story that I had. I knew I just knew that my product was different. So my main thing was like, okay, how do I bring people on the journey with me? How do I show them this is not just a candle, it's an experience? Because you can go buy a candle anywhere else. But this, even if I make the candle, when you go home, you're going to experience something that you have never experienced with a different with another candle company, period. So that that has been the focus. And creating vibes, you know? When you go to a vendor show, our our setup never looks the same. Never. Mainly because. One, I want to create an experience. But two, I don't want people or consumers to feel like, oh, I've already seen that already because you haven't. Even if it's the same thing, you haven't seen it. Even if you've heard about it, you haven't seen it. So come back over here. Come like, come talk to me. Come come see, come check it out. That's always been my thing. Like, it's more than what you think it is. You have to come experience it. Enjoy the vibe, you know, enjoy it. I love it. I love it. And it's, it's, you know, I think I did this on another show or talked about this book. Um, I'm reading this book, uh, playing to win and mm -hmm. it's the marketing strategy book. And they're talking about Oriel, right. The, and they're talking about how they diversified and they, they pivoted when they 
did their whole price point. And it's just so interesting to you. I loved hearing your speaking and because it's like you truly understand it's it's we're starting to move into this consumer experience world. Right. Uh, I think previously um, it was very much marketing, marketing, marketing. Now it's like consumer experience. And and you really are understanding it and you're really targeting that by, as you mentioned several times, creating the vibe, right? Let people in. And I, again, folks, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you on anything, but these candles are dope. They smell phenomenal. Like they last for a long time. I still I'm like precious. I was probably at your spot with like, what was this? I can't remember. It's probably like three months ago, four months ago. It was, it was in March, March. You yeah. came through in March. Came through yeah. in March, and I swear, it, man, that okay. thing is still cruising. And it's it. And we're we're in we're in the middle of summer. We're almost in summer now. And, and so, uh, again, I'm not trying to, folks. You, you just got to check out the spot. It's good. Now, let's speak, speaking of, who is your ideal customer? To be completely honest with you, my ideal customer is whoever wants to experience what I'm bringing to the table. Um, I think from being at a brand where we talked about the consumer and the ideal person to come and get it. One thing that I realized as I was doing stuff like that is that you cut so many other people off that you didn't even know who would probably be interested in it. And the reason why I say this is because by having a brick and mortar, the people who I would think will come in the shop are not the people who come in the shop. And that's like being a hundred percent, which is like, it's, it's not, it's, I get, the people who come in the shop is just a vast variety of individuals. Um, and they all say the same thing. Wow, this is dope. Your shop is so nice. Um, this candle is great. So it's like, I can't say that I have an ideal consumer who is an actual person, a being that's from age X to Y. My ideal person or individual is whomever comes into the store and they receive what I'm giving them. That's who it is. Mm, I love it. I love it. Now, through this moment of of growth and, and uh, you know, transition into entrepreneurship, you mentioned you're talking to Ian with dead stock and two weeks later, come back. It's like, you know what? I'm doing it. Yeah. Have you ever had a moment of self-doubt? It comes. It definitely comes. When I, uh, I went through like, what is the seven, seven stages yeah. of depression? <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Yep. After I quit my job, I was like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do this. And then I was like, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa precious, where, where's your plan? It's like, I don't need no plan. You got this. And then it was like, okay, we are, what are we doing? Like, what, how did, what are we doing? But then honestly, I just got to a point where I was like, yo, you left your dream career, right? because you saw something over here. They always say that the grass is not greener on the other side, but you made the decision to leave where the grass was green. So it's time for you, even if you are in this crappy situation, this crappy lot, I always looked at it as a lot. If you are in this crappy lot and you see weeds over there and it needs to be plowed and you need new soil, you gotta get dirty. And I just looked at it from that perspective, like, okay, well, I got this crappy lot. Let me go get my shovel. Let me put on my my boots. Let me put on my overalls. And I just got to get to work so I can build a foundation. And once I have this foundation built, I pour my concrete, I'll lay it down. And then I'll just build and build and build on top of it. So that's, honestly, that's exactly how I looked at it. Like, my grass going to be green over here regardless. I don't care what your grass look like. The grass going to be, it's going to be green and we're going to have buildings on it. Man, that is a that is a beautiful analogy. That is amazing. That's great. Now, what what are we planning to build? What what is Precious going to build in the next five years? I'm I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to get to an experience where people come in, and not only do they create the vibe, but they're immersed in it fully with no technology. We're removing cell phones. You can have your cell phone with you, but we're going to ask that you really be present. Um, you said something previously about the consumers wanting to be engaged, right? I think a lot of that has come from the pandemic, just being inside of the house for two and a half years, two years, 
with just yourself and having to learn about yourself and your partner and your kids because you couldn't necessarily leave when you wanted to. And while we were there, we were so connected to the internet because that was the only community that we had. That was the only form of of contact. But now that we are out more, we're still connected to it. I'm driving across the street. A dude don't even look up to see if a car coming. I'm like, yo, bro, it is, I got the green light. You were just (laughs) walking across the street with not a care. You didn't even look up once. Like, so I think disconnecting and becoming one with yourself in this, this curated room that you get to choose that you want to be in, whether this room brings up great memories and you just want to immerse yourself in it, or this room makes you think about what you want to do with your life and how you want to proceed proceed in it. That's the next uh, step that I'm going into, especially with these candles, because candles, they evoke an emotion. Scent evokes an emotion. And if I can get people to, you know, be one and one with themselves and clear uh, on their journey, then I'm happy with that. Man, that's beautiful. And it, it's true. I Again, uh, I can't say enough about these candles. I think they are truly relaxing. And it's true. It's you're, you're creating a scent, right? You're creating a, yeah. a, a moment, a relaxation or a mood, right? You're, you're truly yeah. setting the vibe. Now, what advice do you have for aspiring entrepreneurs or folks that are currently in the game now? Some advice maybe that's been handed down to you. Do it. What Nike say, just do it. Just do it. Like, I I once read this quote that said, um, you're 28, it's going to take you four years to get your degree. In four years, you'll be 32, but you don't want to do it. But in four years, you're still going to be 32, regardless if you get your degree or if you don't get it. Um, and the reason why I say that is because even if you keep saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to do it tomorrow, tomorrow's still going to come, but you haven't made no steps to do what you need to do. Oh, I'm going to do it next week. Next week's still going to come, but you're still going to be looking like, oh, I, you're going to have every excuse to why you didn't do it. And to each his own, you know what your excuse is, but you just need to do it. And if you fail, fail hard and fail fast but get back up and do it again because failure is the only way that you're going to lead to success. That's how I feel. Man, pressure's got me over here trying to run through a goddamn wall. Got me all (laughs) amped up. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Man, I love it. You I gotta can, do it. Man, I'd be telling folks, I'm telling these folks, you know, I've never failed a day in my life. I either learn or I succeed because even in these moments of failure, you know, take those opportunities of learning. And, and we all have that imposter syndrome, right? Where we feel like we go into a room and like, man, I feel like I'm the, there's a lot of smart people in here that's smarter than I am. No, take that opportunity. Like, there's a lot of smart people in here. I can't wait to learn from everybody because exactly. uh, there, there truly is you each individually have something you really unique to bring. And and we hope, you know, we're just kind of trying to help you bring it out of you. That's all we're trying to do. Absolutely. Yeah, you just do it, man. Just don't make no more excuses. No more excuses. And that's the difference truly between an entrepreneur and anybody else is an entrepreneur just goes out and does it. Yeah, you have to. It's like, why not? Yeah. Like, seriously, like, why not? Like, why not just go and do it? If you look at it from the perspective of like, if you have a job right now, right, you had to go fill out an application because you needed to eat it's the same thing it's just that you don't have to answer to nobody the only person you answer into is yourself so yeah just go do it yeah go do it go do it i like it now for the folks that are interested in finding more information about you trying to find the candles where can they find you on the internet what's your website where can they learn more about you so you can uh get all of these vibes at mr proper mr m-i-s-t-e-r okay essentials um also on the gram at mr okay's essentials and if you are in the portland metro area come see your girl um 1458 northeast alberta street the pot is always hot um i will say look us up on google before you come because you know hours be changing but um yeah come see me i'll be there yeah, she, she's all, I swear she's always there. And, you know, if you guys need to, this is a great time for me to plug the newsletter. This information will be on the newsletter. Please visit the shades of e.com to subscribe for the newsletter. You can also follow me on the social sites on Instagram, 
LinkedIn, and Facebook at The Shades of E. Uh, we also have TikTok, which I'll try to do a little bit better about. I think I need to start outsourcing some of this work. But man, Precious, thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there any last words you want to say to the, the listeners? No, I just, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me on here to share my story. Um, I appreciate all the love that has come from, you know, Portland here in Oregon and all over of the United States. Uh, if y'all listening to this, you know, like you said, support the e the newsletter, okay? Yeah, yeah. Follow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, man. we out here, we, we giving we giving gems, so we support. Are, man, you know I'm me? telling you. It's it's free education out here, folks. Like like she said, you twenty eight and thirty two. That thirty two is gonna come. It's a great way to learn how to do something. Precious Hannah, thank you again so much, uh, Mister OK Essentials. Please check him out over on Alberta Street. And again, you can go ahead and check him out on their website or visit theshadesofe.com and go ahead and visit the uh, subscribe to the newsletter and we'll get the information out there. Precious, thank you again so much for those listening. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to The Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.